To the radio station! Torches! Get your torches! Pitchforks! You can't be an angry mob without pitchforks! Hey guys, how's it going? This is Trey here, and today we're playing Tower of Fantasy. Okay, so before I start this video, I just want to say that the Tower of Fantasy is not a Genshin killer, and Genshin is not a Tower of Fantasy killer, nor is Tower of Fantasy a Genshin clone, and nor is Genshin a Breath of the Wild clone. All of them are their unique games. Even though they all have their similarities, they are all their own different games, and people should stop bashing each game just because they're similar to each other. It's okay to compare games when it comes to criticism and stuff like that, but if you're comparing a game just to bash on another game that's not okay there's some people out there bashing tower of fantasy they'll say things like oh tower of fantasy is just the worst genshin or they'll say things like this game sucks because genshin is better basically you get the idea so yeah, that is not criticism. That's just basically bashing a game. Criticism is when you give feedback while being respectful. The examples I listed before were not respectful at all. Like I said before, even though each game has the similarities toward each other, they're all different and unique. Each game is more different than similar. See, I'm not saying that you can't compare games. I'm just saying that you shouldn't compare a game just to bash on another game. Right, there's something I forgot to mention in this video. And the one thing I forgot to mention is that it's kind of hard to make an original game nowadays. Every game kind of copies something from another game. Making a new and original game is almost impossible nowadays because most ideas are already taken. So you can't really bash a game for kind of copying another game. And many games out there that kind of do the same thing. Tower Fantasy is not the first game that copied another game. There's so many games out there that are copies of another game. So if you're one of those people who bash on Tower Fantasy for being a Genshin clone, then I hope you guys keep the same energy for other games as well and not just Tower Fantasy. But also for every one thing you see that's similar in Tower Fantasy compared to another game, there's 10 other different and unique things that differentiates Tower of Fantasy to the game you're comparing. But basically what I'm saying is that there are more different and unique things in Tower of Fantasy compared to things that are similar. But it doesn't really just apply to Tower of Fantasy, it also applies to other games as well. But if you guys are one of those people who like to bash on games just for the fun of it or trying to cause a reaction or trying to cause some chaos, like... Stop it. Get some help. Get some help. <laughs> There's so many better things to do with your time than try to spread negativity and try to trigger people and all that stuff. Maybe something happened in your life and kind of made you unhappy and you want to make other people's life unhappy. That's not okay. Instead of using that negativity to make other people feel bad, turn it into something positive. Like why not just play your favorite game and kind of cool off there? And maybe you might get a new high score or something like that. Or maybe you might get lucky and beat the really hard boss that you're trying to beat. Or maybe instead use that energy for learning new things. Or maybe use that energy to play your favorite sport. Or maybe you could burn off that negative energy at the gym or something like that. You can burn off your stress that way. But yeah, not only is going to gym fun, but you also get a lot more healthier. So basically what I'm trying to say is that turn that negative energy into something positive. Basically use it to make yourself better instead of trying to bring people down with you. But anyway, that's all I have to say, so back to the video. Breath of the Wild, Genshin Impact, and Tower of Fantasy can all exist together without killing each other. And honestly, you guys should be happy that there are more games like Breath of the Wild and Genshin Impact. That way you have more games with this type of gameplay to play. But not only that, but competition is really good for us, the players, because it'll drive these companies to work harder to make the game better to retain their player base and all in all is beneficial to all of us so yeah you guys shouldn't be bashing a game or trying to hope that a game dies instead you should be encouraging these other competitors to do better and work harder that way it motivate the other companies to also work on the a game yeah for me like i love tower fantasy this game is great and i want to see more games like this like the breath of the wild style games or like open world you can climb anything you can fly you can cook stuff like all the stuff you can do in these type of games like i love it. I want to see more of these type of games in the future because I love this genre a lot and I want to see this genre keep growing and getting better and basically just be able to play more games like this. You know that apparently the developers of this game kind of did a marketing campaign where they said that Tower of Fantasy is going to be a Genshin killer and after that they deleted it. I'm not sure if that's true or not but even if it is, I guarantee you the developers of this game did not think that they were going to kill Genshin with Tower of Fantasy. It's just like a marketing ploy to get people talking about the game and the thing is that it worked. Like people are talking about it. And this game is popping off right now. So that's basically the main reason why they did it. So yeah, with all that being said, 
just enjoy the games for what they are. Each game are very fun on their own. Sure, there's some similarities, but for the most part, they're all different and unique from each other. And honestly, they're all really good games. And if you guys are really fan of the gameplay of these type of games, then you should be happy to see more of these type of games. There's probably some more stuff I could say about this topic, but I don't ramble on too long because this is not the main focus of the video. And not only that, but I don't remember everything I want to say in this video. I don't really script these type of videos. There's probably some stuff I want to talk about, but I just forgot. So if I remember anything, I'll leave it in the comment section below. But definitely let me know what you guys thought about what I just said and whether or not you guys agree or disagree. For me, I just don't like seeing games being hated on for no reason. Because each game takes a lot of effort and time. Time that these developers will never get back and they spent it all on working on this game. And for that reason, for the most part, I can't bring myself to hate a game. But anyways, with all that being said, let's go right into the video. But yeah, I'm sorry it took so long to get to the main point of this video. I'll definitely leave a timestamp in the video. That way you'll know where I can start the, I guess, first impression. But yeah, like I said before, this game is really good. I haven't played this game for that long. I've only been playing it for like an hour, an hour and a half. If you guys count the character creations, so I can't really give an in-depth first impression. But I feel like I played enough where I can kind of talk about what I experienced and how I feel about the game so far. But anyways, let's start off with the character creation. So I love the character creation like I love games with character creation and the fact that this game has that is absolutely awesome And not only that but the character creation is relatively in-depth like it's not that crazy compared to other MMOs and stuff like that But it's actually pretty good you guys can make a whole bunch of combinations of characters And not only that but the character creation is good enough where you actually can make some characters from other games as well So I thought that was pretty cool to see a lot of people make characters from different games But for me personally I don't know about you guys but I'm not really too big of a fan of very in-depth and detailed character creation only because I'm a very indecisive person. I usually spend hours on a basic character creation so the fact this game has such an in-depth character creation I'm like god dang it I'm gonna be here for hours and I'm like I don't want to be here anymore like I just want to play the game. So I'm basically a huge fan and also not a huge fan of in-depth character creations but just in case there's some of you guys out there like I'm not bashing this game because the character creation is that good. Far from it like I actually really like the in-depth character creations but anyway moving from character creation let's talk about the story of this game so yeah let's be before, I haven't really played this game for that long so I can't really say anything about the story because I haven't really seen that much of the story but what I've seen so far from the story it's actually pretty good I liked it a lot I love all the characters I met so far so far the world of this game is pretty cool I like how the enemies are like robots I'm not sure if they're actually robots or not the enemies look pretty cool but not only that but the character designs for each character are pretty cool as well my favorite character so far is Shirley's I think she's absolutely adorable and not only that but the little tiny robot thing I think her name's called Mia that thing is absolutely adorable but I love it. <laughs> and also the voice acting of this game is actually pretty good as well. I really like the English voice acting of this game. I haven't really tried out the other languages, but the English voice actors are killing it right now. Like, that's absolutely really good. But in terms of the cutscenes, the lip syncing isn't really there. It's kind of like Genshin Impact where they don't really focus on lip syncing. The way the mouth moves never matches the voices. But in this game, the same thing. The voices don't really match the mouth movements, but it's relatively close. Like, it's not as bad as Genshin Impact where sometimes the voice will keep going on and the character's mouth will stop moving or sometimes the mouth will keep moving while the voices stop. Yeah, it's not as bad as that. But in terms of the character's hand movements though, those sort of match the voices. So yeah, that I really like a lot. I wouldn't say exactly on point, but for the most part, it's relatively close. But also some of the cutscenes in this game are actually really good as well. For like non-render cutscenes, like they're actually pretty good. So yeah, all in all, the entire story of this game is really good so far. I definitely want to know more about the story in the future. I have gotten spoiled on the story because I was curious about something I want to look it up but yeah I'm not gonna say what it is in this video because I don't want to spoil you guys but anyway let's talk about the gameplay of this game so yeah this game basically plays very similar to that of Genshin Impact and Breath of the Wild I also say this game also plays very similar to Honkai Impact as well as Punishing Great Raven so if you guys play those games you got to be very familiar with the combat system but in this game you can play with keyboard and mouse you also play with controllers and also there is controller support for phones as well so if you guys have an iPhone or a Android you guys can play with controllers so that's just a really good plus right there. Genshin Impact only has mobile controller support for iOS slash iPhones and they don't have it for Android. And the fact that this game has support for both Android and iOS is really cool. And I'd like to see more games with control support for both Android and iOS instead of making it exclusive to one platform. But even though this game has control support, 
It's not really the best, I believe. They say it's like partial control support. So you can play with your controller. You can only really control your characters attacking and walking and stuff like that. Like basically the combat stuff. But you guys can't really access the menu with the controller. So that's kind of a bummer right there. You still have to use your mouse. So hopefully in the future they decide to make it so you can actually play the entire game without having to use the mouse. And that you can navigate the menus and stuff like that with your controllers. But until then, we'll see. I don't think the Chinese version of this game has that yet. I could be wrong. But hopefully they do in the future. But not only that, but I can't seem to connect my PlayStation controller with this game. Like I use a PS5 controller. I've also tested it with a PS4 controller and apparently this game can't really natively detect your PlayStation controllers. Yeah, I'm not sure of the same thing with Xbox. I heard some people say that it works and some people say that it doesn't. They're not sure about those controllers, but for my PlayStation controllers, this game can't really detect it. It's kind of a bummer. I can't really play my controller with this game. I usually like to play Genshin Impact with my controller because I feel like controller is a little more comfortable than keyboards. At least that's for me anyway. So hopefully one day they make it so that this game can detect the PlayStation controllers. But for now, the only workaround to that is to use something called DS4 Windows. But yeah, it's kind of a hassle to do that in my opinion. Like I don't want to learn a new program just to use my controllers because I'm lazy. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm probably just playing with my mouse for now. But hopefully they make the controller support a little bit better in the future. But in terms of the combat in this game, it's relatively fluid. It's actually pretty good. So I show you guys right here like it looks pretty smooth, but not only that, but the animations are pretty fluid as well. Yeah, when I first played this game, I thought the combat was kind of a little bit stiff. That or the animation was kind of stiff, but now I'm looking at it again, like, it seems pretty good. So, yeah, like, no complaints for me. I like it a lot. I'm a huge fan of hack and slash games. Yeah, I love playing games like these. But also, the skills look pretty cool as well. If I switch to my sword, like, this is pretty cool as well. But yeah, not only that, but I love how in this game, you can switch between weapons. You can switch between three weapons, which is kind of cool. That's something I really wish that Genshin had when it comes to the main character. I wish that the Traveler can switch between weapons. But not everybody wants to play as a sword character. Like, some people want to play as their main character using, I don't know, a bow or something like that, or a pole arm, so I like how this game you can switch between different weapons. But not only that, but I wish there was character creation in Genshin Impact. But for me, I don't look anything like the Traveler. Like, I'm not some long haired blonde pretty boy, like, <laughs> I'm ugly in real life. We don't have to go there. I mean, you're not wrong, but you didn't have to say it. So. Yeah, Aether looks nothing like me, so I kind of wish that there was some kind of character creation in that game. Or at least let me change the hair color to at least black or something. That's one reason why I love this game, because I can sort of create myself even though this character looks nothing like me. I basically spent like an hour working on character creation, and I was like, you know what, <laughs> I'm kind of done. I just want to play the game, so yeah, maybe one day I'll fix it up, but for the most part, it looks pretty cool. And when it comes to character creation in these type of games, I usually just go for the basic stuff because I'm pretty basic. <laughs> like, I'm not really anything fancy or anything like that. But speaking of which, this game has double jump and my god i love games with double jump like look at this it makes traveling so much easier with double jump i basically have like a 60 inch vertical which is kind of cool this time in genshin impact where sometimes you kind of get stuck but with double jump i can basically jump over most things so i like that a lot i won't be stuck having to climb around a small ledge i can usually jump over it but not only that but this game also has aerial combat which is also really cool as well so yeah you guys fight in the air but not only that but you can kind of like smash down so yeah, that's really cool. I really wish that Genshin Impact had aerial combat because I love fighting in the air. I think it's so cool. The fact this game has it is really awesome as well. It does consume your stamina, which I just found out now. <laughs> so that kind of stinks, but even then it doesn't really subtract any points for me because I just like aerial combat. So I'm all for more games with aerial combat, but I'm not sure you can use your skills in mid-air. You can. Okay, so that's awesome right there. Yeah, the combat is a lot of fun. Another thing I like about this game is the jetpack. In Breath of the Wild and Genshin Impact, you have a glider. So for the most part, you can really only just glide down. So yeah, you have to go to a high point to fly down. And I feel like it's kind of annoying to always have to find a high point just to travel faster. At least in Breath of the Wild, Link has a skill for Volley's Gale. It makes it so you can at least fly up a little bit and that way you can glide down. But when it comes to Genshin Impact, for the most part, that skill is kind of locked behind some characters. So like characters like Venti or or Kazuha. Those are the only characters that can do that. Otherwise, you don't have those characters. You have to collect like these little wisps, and that's the only way you can really do that, which is kind of annoying to having to always collect some wisps in order to do that. I kind of wish I can do it without having to collect wisps, because I'm lazy, and I don't really want to go out there and collect some wisps. But in this game with a jetpack, you basically just fly up a little bit, and then after that, you can glide down. Did I show you guys right over here? If I plus two, I'm basically using my jetpack, and look, I basically fly up in the air at first, and after that, I can just glide down, so... I'm not sure if I keep flying up or not. I don't think I can. Let me try. 
Oh, I can. Okay, so I can basically press the space bar and glide up. The only thing is that I don't have enough stamina, so I might die here. <laughs> Alright, so I press 2, jump back down, and then I... Oh, uh, well, <laughs> I just took some damage right there, but there's a chest over here. This is how the chest looks like in this game. So yeah, right there I got some like the nuclear stuff and the currencies. And I'll get into the gacha system later, but yeah, the world of this game looks pretty good. This is only the starter area, and not like super detailed, but for the most part, I think it looks pretty good. So yeah, also around the world, there's these nucleus that's kind of scattered around here. These are like the gacha currency. I'm not sure if the jetpack is a cooldown or not, but like right there you see like the time. What the heck is this? A lift? Oh, okay, another thing about this game I've had to talk about is that you can throw things. This is really cool. And it gets you an impact. You can't really throw things. The only time you can throw things is if you have some sort of gadget. And that's what kind of stinks, guys. I wish I can carry like some boxes to help me reach higher heights. If you guys play Kingdom Hearts, I'm really used to that in Kingdom Hearts. And I kind of wish that Genshin Impact had that. But yeah, this is me fighting enemies. That's basically the sword right there. I'm gonna switch to my other weapon, which is a dual blade. That's basically most of the weapons I unlocked right now. But let me try to get this thing. Can I fly? Yeah, there we go. So I got it. Oh yeah, you can also climb on trees as well. I didn't really have to use a jetpack. But yeah, I'm curious. Can I use a jetpack while I'm jumping in air? I can. Okay, so yeah, this is kind of cool. I like this. Like, the jetpack is really neat. I've always been a big fan of jetpack ever since I was a little kid. So the fact this game has jetpacks is like, it's awesome. Like, going back to saying before, the world of this game is relatively beautiful. It's not super in detail, but it looks pretty good. So yeah, no complaints for me. Like, I think it looks awesome. Oh, well, that's so cool. Oh my god, it looks like I just did the move that Kiba did from Naruto, Fang over Fang. But also, you can dodge in this game. There's a stamina bar, so if you guys look on the right hand screen, you have to see like the little stamina thing. So you only dodge like three times before you have to like refill. But not only that, if you time a dodge correctly, you can kind of slow down time, which is actually really awesome. That's one of the things I wish that Genshin Impact had. I know that Honkai Impact has it, but I wish Genshin Impact has the same thing as well, but fortunately not. I like the whole slow down time thing. I don't think I can do it right now. It's not really attacking me. But it is my dodge with the dual blades, and this is my dodge with the sword. It's not as cool as the dual blades, but it's not bad. But it is in the map of this game, so overall the map is relatively big. I'm pretty sure it's probably going to expand later on in the future. So yeah, I don't think it'll be just this. I could be wrong. It looks like a moon thing. This allows you to unlock the entire map. That's one of the first things you want to unlock first. These are like a little like teleport points, kind of like Genshin Impact, where you don't really unlock the map, but you can just teleport there. And this is like one of those like pod things. I think it's like one of the gotcha things. It's showing that there's one right here. It'll also this is like huts as well. It's kind of cool. But yeah, I'll show you guys the teleporting. So I'm going to just teleport over here. But yeah, this is what it looks like when you teleport. It looks pretty cool. This game loading screen R looks really cool as well. Like a whole bunch of these type of loading screens. But here we are back in the tower. It's raining right now. Yeah. <laughs> the world could look a little gloomy, but it is fine. But in terms of inventory, this is what you have to work with. You can't get more slots over time. But also, you can get some outfits for your character as well. So these are all outfits you can unlock for your main character right now. And I'm pretty sure there'll probably be more in the future. But same thing with the jetpack. But these are the stats for your characters. So you have HP, endurance, with stamina, the regen, crit, crit ray, crit damage the attacks, and elemental attack, and then resistance towards like other elements and physical resistance, stuff like that. But right here, you can select your weapons, change between them, and all the weapons you can get. But I feel like it's kind of meant for the gameplay of this game. I'm pretty sure there's more stuff I can talk about. It's that I don't remember everything. But if I remember anything, I'll definitely leave a comment down below. Let us let me know what I forgot to talk about. But I feel like I talked about most of the important stuff. Hey, one last thing is that you can actually see the time. So I'm not sure if you can actually change time or not. I click on these times, but it doesn't really do anything. So I'm not sure if I'm doing it right. I'm double clicking it. I'm like clicking that. And doesn't really work so I'm not sure if you can actually change time or not but anyways last thing I want to talk about is the gotcha system of this game the gotcha system is the main attraction when it comes to these type of games and not only that but it's probably the part you guys are waiting for when it comes to these first impressions let me show you guys the gotcha system so yeah right here you have the weapon galore so this uses the gold nucleus and this is basically the permanent banner so Every 10 poles, you get an SR or SSR, and then after 80 poles, you get one SSR. So, yeah, in terms of the rates of the standard or permanent banner, it is 0.75% chance for a SSR character, and I think it increases over time to 2%, and then SR weapons starts at 1%, and then goes up to 12%. And if you do 120 poles, you can pick for any character you want, and duplicates, you get one of these flame gold, SSR fusion core, stuff like that. But these all the SSR characters so far, they're relatively 
decent amount of them. And these are the four stars of this game. So yeah, not much four stars, but at the same time, I feel like they'll probably add more in the future. But after that, is the rare weapons is the 91.4% chance of getting. And these weapons don't unlock you any characters. Also, some kind of battery thing, which I'm not sure what the heck this is. Probably to like, upgrade your weapons and stuff like that. So that's it for the standard banner. When you first start with this game, they give you about like 30 of these things. I'm not sure it's like a beginner thing or some kind of event where I believe if you do three multis in the permanent banner, you can guarantee one SSR character just for like the first time. So yeah, I could be wrong. I'm not sure. But we'll do some polls in this video, so we'll find out together. But other than the standard banner, there's another one. This one, the black nucleus one. So I think it's like more of a weapon banner, I think. The race for this banner is 0 0.3 for SSR weapons, 3% for SR weapons, and then duplicate same thing. So the race in this banner is worse than in the gold one, but they also added some other stuff as well, like the weapon battery and some kind of like items. It's basically kind of like the friend point banner if you play all the gadget games where it's not only just characters, but also like some other random stuff as well. But you know that, but this banner has no guaranteed or pity system. So yeah, you can keep polling and not get SLR characters. This banner not really that great. It's one of those banners that you just pull on whenever you have enough to poll. Yeah, when it comes to like the limited banners or the event banners, it's right over here. So basically the same thing as the permanent banners. You get SR or SSR character every 10 polls. And after 80 poll, you get a 50% chance to get the feature character and a 50% chance to get some rather random characters. And after that, you have to do an extra 40 poll to guarantee that character. So when it comes to rates in this banner, it's basically the same thing. Like 0.75% chance for SSR weapon, 1% chance for SR weapon, and then increases over time, I believe. And then after you do 120 polls, you're guaranteed the character. And that's what you get for polling dupes. I believe if you poll in this banner, the polls carry over to the next one. So yeah, I think if you do like 10 polls in this banner, the next event banner, you should be starting off at 10 polls. I'm pretty sure they say it's somewhere. I just can't find it right now. Maybe I'm tripping. So right over here it says that you will get one star weapon every 80 polls. Total orders fewer than 80 rolls. Roll over to the next event. So right here I think if you do less than 80 polls it carries over to the next banner. I think if you do more than 80 polls it doesn't carry over. I could be wrong. But overall the gacha system in this game is pretty decent. It's relatively better than Genshin Impact in a way. I'm not sure how generous this game is but it seems better than Genshin Impact because you only have to do 12 multis in order to guarantee you a character. And 80 multis are basically the 50 50 whereas Genshin Impact 90 polls is the 50-50 which for the most part you don't really get to 90 polls in Genshin Impact anyway so basically the guarantee is like at 80 polls but I'm not sure if the gacha system in this game has a soft pity how in Genshin Impact around 75 polls is when you hit that soft pity and your chances of getting a 5 star increases over time I'm not sure if this game has a soft pity it might be the whole increase by 2% chance or something like that this might be the soft pity every single time you pull you might increase your chances kind of like Fire Emblem Heroes you play that and maybe not like Genshin Impact where you have to hit a certain amount in order to get the soft pity but I could be wrong I haven't really pulled in this game yet so I don't really know but for those of you who know definitely let me know in the comment section below but right now this is the first limited character Nemesis see I really want Nemesis but yeah I think for the most part you have enough time to get the 80 pulls in order to guarantee the 50 50s but yeah, I don't think you have enough to actually guarantee the characters see, for the most part I don't think you really get Nemesis guaranteed unless you spend money but eventually Nemesis will be added into the standard banner or the permanent banners if you guys want to pull her now you can pull it later on but right here like the dark crystal this can be used to convert it to the red nuclei you need to summon on this banner right here if i press this button it says spend 150 dark crystal to buy one red nucleus it's a little better than genshin impact in that you only have to spend 150 of these basically primo gems to get like a red nucleus it's basically only 10 off it's nothing crazy but it's a little bit better so you can sort of tell that they're trying to basically lower everything to that of genshin impact to make the gacha a little bit better and for the most part i like the changes like I said before i haven't really pulled in this game i don't really know exactly how good the gacha system is in this game but from what i read on paper it seems pretty good so basically that's all of the aspects of the gacha system besides these stores. Right here's the limited character's weapon so you can buy it after doing 12 multis. But yeah, here's the shop for the standard banner and some other random stuff. I think it's like for the other banner, the purple one. So yeah, in terms of the prices in this game, it's basically the same as Genshin Impact. So right here at the monthly card, all this random stuff. Here's like the daily supply thing. Here's where you can convert your dark crystal into nuclei. And here is the prices for the dark crystals. It's basically the same thing as Gashin Impact. So nothing crazy here. Right here, like limited pack. But also is a battle pass in this game. I'm not sure I can find it or not. But right here, if you click on the gift box, you can see all the stuff you can claim for like the start of this game. Whole bunch of stuff right here. Yeah, this is also the Discord Nitro thingy. And this is where you can do the daily sign-ins. This is what you get every single week. Nothing crazy. You only get 20 of these dark crystals. You know, so 
like some like relic shard stuff. There are tons of level packs. So right here, every time you reach a certain level, you get some reward. Basically, like Genshin Impact Adventure Rank System. But I think the max level is level 80, whereas Genshin Impact level 60. So we'll see how long it takes to get to level 80. Genshin Impact takes forever to get to level 60. So right here, the battle pass. What's cool about this battle pass is that it goes all the way up to 180 levels. Yeah, let's scroll all the way here. At some point, the normal rewards are kind of trash. Like right here, around level 151, you basically just get some gold with nothing crazy. But in terms of the extra rewards it seems pretty good yeah there's a lot of stuff to get here and basically a little bit over a month where you can complete your battle pass but in terms of the prices for the pass same thing as Genshin Impact $10 for basically all the extra stuff and then if you pay a little bit more you can instantly get to level 30 okay that's pretty cool I like that I didn't really read this at first yeah this is actually pretty cool and also get some of those random stuff as well get like a little avatar thing get some outfits and get other stuff. You also get like 10 of these red nucleuses and SR relic box. But apparently, I think if you buy the regular pass, I think you get some dark crystal as well. I could be wrong, maybe just showing me the extra stuff you can get, but I don't think so. I think this is like the bonus stuff you get. Oh, and that is where you put your codes and newcomer event. If you get like 700 points, you can get an SSR box and you pick whatever SSR you want. Yeah, make sure to do this if you guys are new. You have basically 17 days to do it. I'm gonna recording this video, so by the time I upload it, it should be like 10 days left. Probably a little bit less, but yeah, it's kind of about everything for the gotcha system. The last thing I can do is to basically pull. So we'll try out the purple or the black nucleus pull first and see what we get here. As before, I don't think there is a pity for this. So it's one of those banners that you just pull whenever you want. But anyway, I want to do 110 pull and see what we get here. But yeah, the polling system, like look at this. This is so cool, man. Like the animation for the polling is absolutely incredible. But yeah, the music also really good as well. If I talk about the music in this game, the music in this game is really good. I like it a lot. Like that's probably one of my favorite parts of this game is the music. So let's see what happens. I press the button. Okay, so I can't skip it. Okay, so I, I thought that I might accidentally skip the entire multi. They basically got a bunch of random like junk. <laughs> so yeah, nothing crazy about this. But let's see what happens. I skip it. Let's see what it looks like. This is what it looks like when you skip it. So nothing crazy. The main thing is the permanent banners. So I switched over to the permanent banner. But you guys can tell my voice is kind of dying. <laughs> oh, I'm like, kind of struggling to record this video. But we're almost done. So yeah, I, I try to truck right through this. Yeah, as you guys can see, I did like one poll. It's basically the tutorial poll. Okay, so let's see if I do 30 polls. If I'm going to get a SSR character. Let's see if that's true or not. I'm not sure if it's true. It doesn't really say that you guarantee an SSR character in three multis. Apparently people are saying that when you First start off, you just gotta do three multis, I think, in the permanent banner, and you can get a SSR character. But anyway, let's get right into it, so let's go. Alright, let's see what we get. I wanna see the SSR animation. I wanna see how different it looks from like the random stuff. Or like these regular po Oh, so I think right there. At the end there, you might see like gold or rainbows. Yeah, right here we're getting a four-star character. But I do want to talk about the team system in this game but i'll talk about that after i finish the polls but i completely forgot about that but we got what is this hilda so this is one of the characters you can buy basically nothing crazy but yeah let's see if we get multiple four stars or maybe not okay so i think some of these weapons I already have like these i think this weapon basically what i have so we got a hilda right there so i don't have her so i'll take her but let's do another one all right come on i want to see SSR animation granted the SSR rate is 0.75% chance, so chance of me seeing SSR animation in like the first few multis is probably like super slim. But hopefully you get a new 4 star character. Alright, right here got another new 4 star character, so any Eni or something, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm really bad with names, but... Alright, let's get to this one. Come on, please, multiple 4 stars? Is it even possible to get multiple 4 stars? Probably. Here's my luck is really bad. Alright, last multi. Let's see if it's true. Let's see if we're actually gonna get a SSR character here or not. Alright, we got ready? Let's go. Let's see if we actually guaranteed a star character or have it been trolled. <laughs> Probably trolled. It didn't really say, so I don't know. Yeah. Oh, it's red. Okay, yeah, so you are guaranteed. So you're guaranteed to get. I was thinking, I was like, did we just get the SSR character immediately? I wanted some hype into it, but I see what we get. A lot of these SSR characters in the beginning probably gonna be power crept really soon, so <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't matter, these designs look pretty cool. Alright. Alright, animation. Oh, okay, so this is animation for SSR character. So, Huma or Huma. She looks pretty cool. I'm not sure if she's like meta character. 
Oh, that's like another SR character. Oh, I got the same character. <laughs> got Echo again. There we go. So one SSR character and then two SR characters. So I'm gonna show you guys the characters right over here. So these are all the characters available in games so far. So you can click on each one of them and see like the costume when you unlock them to three stars. The four star characters don't have a second outfit. So yeah, only the SSR characters have a second outfit. But yeah, this is another SR character. There's a whole bunch of them. But this is the limited character right here. So it says limited offer. But this is her outfit over here. If it comes to the character system in this game, I'm not really a big fan of it. And the reason why is because you can only use one character at a time. So basically, these characters are kind of like skins. So if I pick Hummer right here, right, and I activate her, I basically am using her skin. And right now, I'm playing as Hummer, right? So... Yeah, like she's the only character I can use. And for me, I always use the main character. So for Genshin Impact, I'm a Traveler main. I think I'm gonna be sick. And when it comes to the Traveler, I basically use him the most. Yeah, when it comes to the other characters, I do use them. But I don't use them as much as the Traveler. But in this game, since you can only use one character, I'm basically gonna be playing the main character 90% of the time in this game. And I'll probably rarely ever see these other characters I pull for. And it's kind of a shame because all these characters look really cool. And I'll have to use them with my main character in this game. I've had them fight alongside him, but unfortunately, you can only use one character, so yeah, I'm probably never gonna see these characters ever, and that kind of stinks because I like being able to play on main character while also being able to play on other characters while I'm in combat, and and the fact that you can't do that kind of is a bummer. But it kind of makes sense why you can only use one character in this game, and that's because this game is an MMO, so Genshin Impact is not really an MMO. Yeah, when it comes to MMOs, for the most part, you can only use one character. So that's probably one of the reasons why I decided that you can only use one character in this game. Yeah, this game is kind of like an MMO first and gotcha second whereas Genshin impacts more of a gotcha first and MMO second even though Genshin not really MMO but you guys know what I mean <laughs> so when it comes to Genshin impact you're switching characters but in this game the main thing is switching is weapons they're right here with Hummer I basically have two weapons like this is what I'm switching in between instead of characters so I'll show you guys over here so right now I'm, I'm fighting with the sword and if I press R I switch to the other weapon and then I can go back to the sword and instead of switching characters in this game you're switching weapons which like I said before I really like that system a lot but at the same time I wish that you could play with other characters as well alongside main character and not only that but you work so hard on making your main character only to not be able to use them but yeah i'm not sure about you guys but i'm not a big fan of the team system or whatever in this game but then again i could be wrong maybe in the future they might change it maybe there's a way to play with your other characters while also using the main character i have no idea like i haven't really gotten that far into the game i probably don't have all the mechanics unlocked but from what i read i don't think you can yeah it kind of stinks but if you want to go back to your main character all you got to do is go over here and remove the crystal thingy so yeah, here you go back to your main characters. What's good about a weapon is that they actually stay in between characters, so you don't have to like keep changing them all the time. Yeah, not only that, but every single character can use every single weapon, so I think that's kind of neat. But anyway, I think that's kind of about it for everything I want to say in this video. But yeah, overall, I like this game a lot. I think this game's a really good game. I hope this game does really well, where it's like kind of like Genshin Impact level successful. The character creation, the combat, the world, the music. Like gotcha system, like it's all great. So yeah, I love everything about this game. This game absolutely incredible. Not only that, but like an MMO, so you can see other people as well and play with them. I think that's really awesome. But overall, this game is absolutely amazing. So highly suggest you guys play this game if you guys are interested in like Breath of the Wild or Genshin Impact combat systems, or if you guys need like a side game. This game is perfect for that as well. I'm not sure how time consuming this game is, but anything like an MMO or Genshin Impact, it'd probably be very time consuming. Maybe it can't really be a side game. I don't know. Yeah, so me personally, I definitely will play this game it is that i probably won't play it a lot not as much as i play genshin impact if this game came out before genshin impact i probably would have been balls deep in this game instead of genshin impact but unfortunately it didn't happen this game might be one of those side games i play whenever i feel like it or whenever genshin has that downtime and nothing to do but i will however probably log on every single day just to get the rewards but yeah if you guys are curious what server i'm playing on i'm playing on the starlight server because when i pick servers i usually pick the coolest name and out of all of them starlight was my favorite either that or solarius so one of those two and it's how to pick starlight so if you guys see me around here definitely feel free to say hi or something like that nobody cares if you guys even care <laughs> but anyways that's kind of about the video hopefully you guys enjoyed definitely let me know what you guys thought about this game whether or not you guys are liking it so far whether or not you guys are going to keep playing this game what you guys like or dislike about this game let me know all that good stuff down below and also give me some tips on this game as well because as before i'm kind of new to this game so i don't really know what to do i'm probably gonna make a lot of beginner mistakes so any tips in this game would be great the only thing i don't want is spoilers when it comes to the story i do enjoy the story so i don't really want to be spoiled also when it comes to tower of fantasy 
fantasy content on my channel. I'm not sure if I will do tower fantasy content on my channel. Like, let me know if you guys want to see towers fantasy content on my channel. But at the same time, I'm not really sure if I want to do tower fantasy content on my channel. Like, I'll definitely take you guys' feedback into account. But ultimately, it comes down to whether or not I want to do it. Right now, I'm not exactly sure whether or not I want to do it. So, yeah, we'll see. But I'm definitely not going to write it off because I'm looking for, like, another staple on my channel when it comes to content. And right now, the staple content on my channel is Kingdom Hearts and Genshin Impact. Who knows? Maybe this game will be the third staple on my channel that I do every single week. So, we'll see. But anyways, if you guys want to see more Tower Fantasy content or Genshin Impact or Kingdom Hearts or all the mobile game content, definitely hit the like and subscribe button. But anyways, I gotta end the video right here because my voice is dying. <laughs> it's really bad. So, I'm really struggling to talk right now. I don't understand how people can stream for hours. I can't even talk for like an hour and a half. But anyways, comment this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys later.